10 minutes to explain the entire Fortnite storyline. Let's begin. This orb of energy right here is called the Zero Point. Rather than a character or a group, the story not only revolves around this, but also started it. Yes, it is so powerful that it caused the Big Bang, creating the universe, life, and a small little island we know as Reality Zero. You see, the Zero Point is so powerful, it needs constant protection from anyone trying to control it for themselves. So it created the Fortnite Island and covered it with a violent storm that is constantly closing in and resetting, effectively creating a loop. Fast forward billions of years and an organization known as the Imagine Order somehow manages to do exactly that. This group set up by a mysterious being named Geno uses its power to take control of the storm and build a huge headquarters between both islands known as the bridge. They begin using the zero point to teleport to other realities, kidnapping random people and trapping them in this loop. Here they're forced to participate in a constant battle royale that resets every 22 minutes and the best warriors are recruited by the imagined order. For thousands of years, the IO has done this without any interruption, but someone steps up to the challenge. A group of vigilantes emerge, dedicated to take taking down the order and freeing the zero point. They're led by the Foundation, a strong and intelligent brute, and joining him is the Visitor and the Scientist, who explore and analyze hundreds of worlds. The Paradigm is their pilot and engineer who follows the plans of the Origin, their tactician. The group is completed by the Imagined and the Order, two sisters who are rumored to be the daughters of Geno. They create the Seven and take an oath to destroy the Imagined Order for good, but the IO has bigger problems. Over the years, the zero point's energy attracts dangerous creatures. Mysterious beings like a purple cube appear, trying to get the zero point by destroying the island. Others are much closer to home, with a shard of a nearby planet crashing into the ocean. This contains the Ice King and a creature that was growing in his dungeon. With this monster about to break free, the Imagined Order turns to the Paradigm, and after striking a deal with her, she joins the IO under a new name, Singularity. The Paradigm builds a huge robot to fight off the monster, resulting in the final showdown. She struggles to defeat it, but is able to use the Zero Point to finally take it down. But her job wasn't done. While the island was saved, she decides to investigate where this monster came from and disappears into space. With the Zero Point exposed and breaking down fast, the Imagined Order doesn't understand how to fix it, so the Seven Step in. They basically say, have you tried turning it off and turning it on again using a couple rockets? And it works, resetting the island and healing the zero point. But this new island doesn't remain peaceful for long. In the Imagine Order's Doomsday Division, an engineer named Midas is beginning to question his work. The loop isn't ethical and he wants to destroy it from the inside. Alongside his daughter Jules, he works on a device that will push back the storm and sabotage the IO's plans. When his machine is finally finished and the countdown hits zero, Midas' plan works. The storm is defeated and for a moment, everything is peaceful. I mean, well, besides the Imagined Order's headquarters who are scrambling to stop it. Here we're introduced to John Jones, a field agent who has spent his whole life working for the IO. For years, he has traveled onto the island to study the loopers, leaving behind a snapshot of himself with each journey. You see, every time someone leaves this loop, it creates a version of themselves that remains. And that is why you see so many variations of someone. So Jones is tasked with stopping Midas' plan. And with the storm pushed back, he had given up hope until it did something extraordinary. Ordinary. It fought back. The water between the islands rose, creating a wall and wiping out Midas' device. Once the water sinks back down to a normal level, we're already fighting off more villains who are trying to get the zero point, and this leaves it exposed once again. While the Imagine Order works on a way to fix this, they don't want anyone jumping into the zero point and returning home. So one of the IO's leaders, Dr. Sloan, gives Agent Jones a new mission. He has to recruit the galaxy's best bounty hunters to stop anyone from escaping the loop. So throughout the next few months, Jones travels through 88 different realities, and by the time he finishes his job, he learns the IO didn't do theirs. The Zero Point is on the brink of imploding again, so he begs Dr. Sloan to do something, but she doesn't listen. Sloan is dedicated to solving the problem herself rather than admitting they need the Seven's help again. Jones realizes that there's no time to waste. The Zero Point is literally minutes away from destroying reality. Now get out of there. I'm gonna do what we should have done from the very start. I'm going to the Seven. And so he summons the Foundation and asks for his help to contain the Zero Point. In return, he promises to help him get to the mysterious Geno, and the Foundation agrees. But it's already too late to save the Zero Point, and the only option is to contain the blast. He creates a tower of stone around the Zero Point and seals himself inside. The sacrifice pays off and saves reality, but no time to celebrate. Agent Jones is arrested by the Imagined Order, and the Foundation is trapped inside the Spire.
Small UFOs begin to appear around the island, abducting loopers, running experiments, leaving behind crop circles, and more. But by the time the Imaginator notices, the Chimera have already arrived. They obliterate the spire, and we watch the Foundation seemingly fall to his death. Dr. Sloan needs to react fast, so she sets up a command center named Corny Complex to come up with a plan. This is where Sloan begins work on Operation Skyfire, a way to take down the mothership and save Reality Zero for good. She notices that the aliens are abducting nearby towns and decides this is the perfect opportunity to set up an ambush. She purposely leaks the location of Corny Complex to the enemy, plants dozens of bombs into the ground, and of course, the aliens fall right into her trap. They abduct the base and all of the bombs underneath into the mothership, but Operation Skyfire won't work without the help of the loopers, so Sloan sends us into the mothership to make sure everything goes smoothly. On our way to activate the bombs, we set off the alarm, but instead of being swarmed by alien soldiers, the Chimera send their true army. This is impossible. was gone for good. The cube from all those years ago is back and begins annihilating the loopers. Now we're able to shut it down before more damage is done and return to the mission at hand, arming the bombs. With the clock ticking, Operation Skyfire was all but a success. But Dr. Sloan is terrified by this cube and doesn't want to risk it coming back to the island, so she betrays all of us and leaves us to die on the mothership. We don't go down easily though, the loopers work together to revive the cube, turning it bright blue and activating the elevator. As we head into the main chamber, everything is explained. The cube from all those years ago was gone for good. What Sloan failed to consider was that it was just one of thousands. The Chimera were just a decoy. This is the true army. And all the way at the back, their golden leader, the Cube Queen. But it's too late. The bombs detonate and the last reality is unleashed upon the island. Cubes are everywhere and the Queen is already beginning her attack, so she summons her army to the center of the island and uses them to create a gigantic pyramid. With this power, she'll be able to open a portal between the Fortnite Island and the last reality's homeworld. We've already seen what a single cube could do. Imagine what happens when a hundred thousand arrive. As usual, the Imagined Order doesn't even have a plan. But whenever the island has been in danger, they have refused to fix it. And I know this is the storyline explained, but I don't really got a reason for this. So with the IO once again ignoring the fact that reality is about to end, the island calls out to the seven. Ever since we watched the Foundation fly into the water, the rest of the group have been putting together a plan to take down the cubes and the IO in one quick sweep. With the Queen's portal beginning to open, and we catch a glimpse of the force she's about to unleash upon us. With the help of the blue cube, we hold off their army for a few minutes, but not before witnessing one of the saddest deaths in the Fortnite storyline. We still miss you, buddy. Meanwhile, Agent Jones is about to have his mind wiped by Dr. Sloan and Gunner. While the rest of the world fights upstairs, these two want to teach Jones a lesson, and as they turn on the machine, they're ambushed by an old friend. The Foundation survived the explosion and has returned to free Jones. The rest of the seven save the loopers on the surface as they make their way to the control chamber. Here, Jones turns off the gyroscope, rotating the island and taking the last reality by surprise. For the final phase of the plan, they make their way to the zero point. The cubes had completely taken over the surface, but they will be safe here. Or so they thought. Yeah, caretakers apparently breathe underwater and were thrown into the ocean just in time to watch the island flip. The cube queen's portal closes and her army crashes into the ocean. We defeat her, but the seventh battle is only half complete. For years, the Imagine Order has been fighting the Seven over control of the Zero Point. But with the island flip, the Seven revealed their true location at the Sanctuary. Thanks to the Caretaker, their attack on the Imagine Order was cut short, leaving them vulnerable. It was time to prepare for the worst possible outcome. After years of tension, the Seven and the Io were finally about to go to war. Drills and earthquakes could be felt underneath the surface as Sloan prepared her counterattack. The Seven's biggest problem was that they weren't fully united. If they wanted to defend themselves against the Io, they would need the Paradigm. She was last seen flying the mech towards the ice moon, and it turns out that for three years she has been stranded there. As the Seven work on a plan to bring her home, the Imagined Order strike. They drill through the surface, quickly taking over the island and surrounding the sanctuary. But thanks to the help of the loopers, we fight back, recapturing key positions every single week. This is the last straw for Dr. Sloan. She is sick of the Seven and the Resistance and decides to just start all over again. So she goes to the Doomsday Division and asks them to create the Collider, a huge device that will destroy the loop and and everyone on the island. Over in the Ice Moon, the Seven finally regroup with the Paradigm. They can't allow Sloan to win, and their best shot at destroying the Collider was the Mech. So with some repairs and upgrades, it's time for battle. After years of tension and months of fighting, the war between the Io and the Seven is finally about to end, and only one of them will survive. The Mech launches from the Ice Moon, flying straight towards the island. We fight off the Io forces, blowing up tanks and slicing blimps. After some struggles and falling into Sloan's trap, we're left to finish the battle on foot. Just 
just before Sloan can shoot Jones, the paradigm delivers one final blow. Any last words, Jones? Look out. The collider is destroyed and the Imagine Order has been taken down once and for all. There's only one score left to settle, Geno. Jones and the Foundation chase after him and we begin a new chapter of the Fortnite storyline.